The only mild surprise is the news that Keenan Allen, not a restructured deal, a trade, the Chicago Bears for a fourth round pick. And it's, I think, simple to look at it this way. $23.1 million is what he's due to make this year. And he's been with the Chargers for 11 years. $23.1 million. They don't want to pay it. The Bears are willing to pay it. The Bears are willing to give up a fourth round pick for the ability to pay it. So you kind of look at that as the Chargers and say, well, what are you doing? Well, if there's another team out there that's willing to give you a fourth round pick to take this guy on, maybe you should find a way to make it work and keep him around. It's just odd to me that the Chargers were willing to hand him over to the Bears. Now, I know the Bears have much more cap space, and it might be as simple as that, but this is a foundational player. It just is a reminder despite all the social media thank yous that we see this week and happy birthdays, now pack your stuff and leave that the teams will post. When it's time to go, it's time to go. When it's time for that interchangeable part on the giant football machine to come out, doesn't matter how long it's been in there, doesn't matter how well it's worked, doesn't matter what it's accomplished for the team. When it's time to pull that piece out and toss it aside, team's going to do it without thinking twice. That's what happened to Keenan Allen. All that accomplishment with the Chargers doesn't matter. Time to go. Yeah, and he was the longest tenured player on that team, Mike. Third round pick in 2013, and now he's gone. Now he's with the Bears. And my first reaction, I'm with you. I thought they should have made this work because I do think he's a foundational piece to this team, a veteran player who all he does is have thousand yard seasons. He had another one uh, this past year. So I thought they should have found a way to make it work. And my first reaction was poor Justin Herbert. Like, who is he going to throw the ball to? Maybe he can request a trade to the Bears. Who says no? First number (laughs) one one overall pick for Justin Herbert. Both teams say yes to that. Wow. He's got Quentin Johnston and Joshua Palmer right now, Mike. He does have Gus Gus Edwards. He does have Will Disley. But, like, who are you going to throw the ball to? I mean, it's going to be, I guess, like Patrick Mahomes has had to operate with the last couple of years rather than having Mike Williams when he's healthy and Keenan Allen, which he has had. But I I, I feel bad for Justin Herbert because this, this is a rebuild, and I don't know how long it's going to take them to rebuild. Well, they do have the fifth overall pick in the draft, and I think most are going to look at that now as the spot where they take the the, the best available receiver. The problem is Marvin Harrison Jr. likely will be gone unless, unless, and we don't know this because two weeks ago today he didn't show up for the media session when we were in Indianapolis at the scouting combine, unless Marvin Harrison Jr. has something up his sleeve where he says, I want to play for the Chargers. That's the only team I'm going to play for. And... If anybody else drafts me, I'm not going there. Kind of the reverse Eli Manning 20 years later. Eli didn't want to play for the Chargers. What if Marvin Harrison Jr. wants to play with Justin Herbert? What if he wants to play for Jim Harbaugh? What if he likes what he's seen from Michigan the past few years? What Jim Harbaugh has been able to do with the Wolverines, even though he wasn't there for the game where Michigan lost to Ohio State. That's how great of a coach he is. Even if he's not there, his team wins. What if that's what he wants? We don't know that. And part of it is my own, all I want for Christmas is one of these players to stand up and push back against the industrial draft complex. But he didn't talk. And he either didn't talk because he's Marvin Harrison's son, which might be the Occam's razor explanation for this, or he didn't talk because maybe he's got a strategy that he doesn't want to share with the world. He doesn't want to get asked a bunch of questions about it and have to either lie about it or answer the questions or maybe have bad body language while he's trying to conceal what he's really thinking. We don't know. Now, we've heard nothing secondhand about anything he might have said in team interviews that's giving anyone pause, but that doesn't necessarily mean he doesn't have a strategy that will reveal itself. But if I'm a receiver coming out, All due respect to any of the other quarterbacks out there. Yeah, I want to play with Justin Herbert. And look, I'm immediately WR1. Now, there's a lot of teams where Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be WR1. But they they will address, I'm confident, 
the position in the draft. And there's other free agents out there, too. There's other options. They have Odo Beckham Jr. is still available if that's something they want to do. Joe Hortiz has experience with him in Baltimore. Jim can make a phone call to John and find out everything he needs to know. So they have other options, and it's obvious now that that is an area of need that they'll address one way or the other. How far away, Mike, do you think this team is from contending? I mean, when you have a quarterback, you think you're going to contend. I mean, nobody expected the Texans last year to contend, and they got the quarterback and they contended. Can the Chargers contend this year since they have Justin Herbert? I think there's a, probably a chance that they can. They're obviously in a very difficult division with the Chiefs being the king of all of football the last two years. But how long is this rebuild going to take for Jim Harbaugh to put it together? I think they are going to contend immediately. I think with Jim Harbaugh, looking at what he did in San Francisco in 2011, inheriting a team that went 6-10, and 10, under Mike Singletary with Jim Tom Sula as the interim coach at the end of the year. Immediately, it was jumper cables to the entire organization for Jim Harbaugh. And you've got Justin Herbert. And I think that what happened this week, the message that is sent to the team, when four of your best players are available, in Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Joey Bosa, and Khalil Mack, you're sending the message to the entire organization. There's a new sheriff in town. There's a new approach here with the Chargers. We've had a lot of great players in recent years, but we haven't done a lot of great things as a team. So some of these guys are going to be gone, and as it stands, half of them are gone. And the ones that stay are on notice. They're on notice. Hey, they were able to get Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa to play ball and redo their contracts and reduce what they're due to make. I don't have the details in front of me, but they were able to get something more palatable to them that wasn't just moving money around. And I think the message is there are no sacred cows in this organization right now, except for Justin Herbert, who Jim Harbaugh has already said he was star starstruck to meet. And yeah, because he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL and Jim Harbaugh is going to prop him up and put the pieces around him. Whatever they do, however they do it, However that roster looks when the dust settles in late August and the rosters on every team cut to 53, those guys are going to be ready to go. And I think they will be competitive and they will contend this year because I, and you may be one of the few people who get my Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana. It's always something with the Chargers, <laughs> but it's always something yeah. with the Chargers. Yeah. And now they have Jim Harbaugh. And whatever it was in the past, all the excuses that, well, uh, uh, well, what, uh, 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 that's all gone now, I think. I think Jim Harbaugh comes in. There are no excuses. We're going to go out there and attack each day with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. And they aren't going to get caught up in the things that the team has got caught up in in the past. I've, I've said, I think last season, the Chargers are the best dysfunctional team in football. They're dysfunctional, and of all the dysfunctional teams in the NFL, they're the best one. In this little group of dysfunctional teams that the best teams never have to worry about, the Chargers are the best one, and that's going to change this year. They're going to they're gonna move from the dysfunctional category to the functional category, and let's see what they do. Well, the thing is, Mike, when you have the quarterback, and we all think they do. Now, I, I having said all that, I think Justin Herbert has a ton of, to, to prove, you know, I think we put Justin Herbert up here and I'm not sure he's earned up here. It's all based on potential for what he's done in the NFL so far. He still has a lot more to prove in the NFL. I mean, he's not in that top five quarterback position yet, but he certainly has the potential to do that. So I want to see more from Justin Herbert. But when you have the quarterback and you have the coach, you have a chance. And that's what the Chargers have. Obviously, as I said, they still have some work to do, especially at the receiver position. They've got to do more than just draft the guy. But they'll 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 do that over the course of the next few weeks, probably get some veteran guys to come in. And that receiver market is starting to go. It was the slowest position that, that we have seen. And now it's starting to go, and players are starting to come off the board at that position. I think the Chargers will get some of those second-tier receivers who are still out there. Um, for Justin Herbert. But Mike, when you have those two things, you have a chance. 
And when you look at that division with those coaches, with Sean Payton, who won a Super Bowl, Jim Harbaugh, who's been to a Super Bowl, won a national championship, and then Andy Reid with what he's done with the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. I have said this, I wrote this on X, that is the best group of coaches, I think, in one division since back probably in the 90s when we had Joe Gibbs and Jimmy Johnson. Um, and who am I forgetting? Uh, with the Who was with the Rich Giants? Rich Kotite? Uh, yeah. And we're not putting Rich Kotai in that. But that group of three head coaches who went into the Hall of Fame, Bill Parcells, uh, who went into the Hall of Fame were all coaching in the NFC East. They all won Super Bowls. And I think we see that now in this division with really good coaches. The only thing missing for, for the other teams in that division, we don't know about Antonio Pierce, but obviously we're talking about the Broncos. They don't have the quarterback yet to go with Sean Payton. They're still seeking that. But in the next few years, this could become that division that the NFC East was. You and I remember it in the 1990s when it was the Cowboys going to the, you know, first it was the Giants and then it was Washington and, and then it was the Cowboys and, and they all won championships in that late eighties, early nineties period uh, in the NFC East. And I think we could see that in this division, really good coaches in this division and a couple of really good quarterbacks. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from pro football talk.